Yo, what's up everybody? I've got a gig log today for you guys in a bit of a different format. Um, I'm doing a voiceover because uh, I had an assistant this time for the first time. I spent so much time talking to him, teaching him, uh, that I didn't really get a chance to talk in these videos that I was taking uh, while I was at the gig. So I'm doing it after the fact here. But uh, basically this was a, a wedding that I did where we had the ceremony and the reception. Uh, you can see the reception set up. Uh, we're just working on it right now. There's my assistant uh, in slow motion putting the up lights around the room. I've got 20 of the both lighting IR4s, uh, which we're going to turn on a little bit later. A look at my booth. I've um, got the MacBook Pro M1, um, and I've got it hooked up to my lavish booth here with the Rev1 on top. Absolutely love this lavish booth. I got the two GTD audio mics, uh, the Yamaha mixer there with all the flat uh, cable adapters. Um, my two XLRs going out to my mains, and uh, yeah, those GTD mics have been rock solid for me, so they just live inside that booth. Here's a closer look at my mini moving heads. Uh, they're not DMX'd, uh, they're just in Master Slave, one plugged into the other. And then I got my wash FX uh, screwed on to each of my speakers up top, uh, which also aren't DMX'd. Alright, now we're switching to a look uh, of the ceremony setup. They actually had a really, really nice tent with like a river in the background and a lot of greenery. So this was honestly one of the most beautiful ceremony setups I've uh, seen. One interesting thing was that the venue wanted me to set up in the back. Um, this is a venue that does weddings all the time. They're very efficient. They have their way. Um, you can see that my LD Maui 5 is there in the back of the venue. Uh, usually I like to set up in the front uh, just so that acoustically, you know, from where the officiant is speaking, that's where the sound is coming from. Um, but, uh, you know, because of the aesthetics and things like that, they say they just have everyone set up in the back. I always see that on YouTube, but uh, usually I'm set up in the front. But I set up in the back, everything went well, um, everyone could hear the sound great. Um, and here's my setup next. You can see I was using the Phoenix uh, PTU-2U. Um, I got my Yamaha 10-channel mixer on top. Uh, I got the Jackery giving me the power. Um, and then I'm using the LD Maui 5. I don't have the Go version, so there's no battery built in, but the Jackery can power everything there. Um, and then I just use my laptop to play the different uh, processional, recessional uh, music for the ceremony. I do want to clean up my ceremony setup. Uh, you can see all the wires sort of hanging out there. Um, so I was thinking about making a ceremony rack that has the mixer, the mics all built in and uh, a little bit cleaner. Uh, the reason I don't go just directly mic into the speaker is because sometimes I have extra musicians, um, sometimes I need extra gain on my microphones, and I always have at least two microphones uh, for every ceremony because I mic the efficient and then if the couple has vows or anything like that, I have an extra mic for them. So, um, you know, I'm, I've been looking at different options. This table is actually, I bring this table, I bring the scrim, but it just looks a bit cluttered with all the wires out there. Uh, shout out to Drizzy Dre. I've actually seen his uh, ceremony rack, and that thing is super clean. Um, so I think I may do that next because uh, just because of how clean it looks. And I think for a ceremony, aesthetics are really important. All right, so now we finished up the ceremony, and I got my assistant filming me for my introduction. So check these out next. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Anisha and Blake's wedding reception. If you're ready for a good time tonight, let me hear you make some noise. All right, all right, that's what I like to hear. Now to get this party started, I need all of your help as we welcome some very important guests. So ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the main entrance. I need you all to please put your hands together and help me welcome the bridesmaids and grooms people! Alright, so I'm going to speed this part up a bit. Let me know what you guys do uh, when there's like a long way to enter, a long time. Uh, do you guys wait for everyone to kind of get settled before you announce the next party? It just took a long time for them to get to the dance floor, but I just let them have their moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next up, I need you all to please make some noise and help me welcome the parents of the bride. All right, 
ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. At this time, I would like to ask everybody to please rise up out of your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you all to make some noise. I need you to scream, and please help me welcome our newlyweds, Alicia and Blake! So yeah, shortly after the entrances, they had dinner, and man, it was like 6.30, and they were ready to start the dancing. So one of the things that was really interesting about this venue was there were so many windows, and it was so bright there on the dance floor. So when we started, um, I was a little worried that by how bright it was uh, that people wouldn't feel like dancing. So I, I did my best. You know, we had, we had a bit of a long uh, dance floor set. It was like three and a half hours long. So I started them off with some 70s and 80s songs and uh, we worked up from there. Finally, as the night went on, it got a bit darker. Um, and then my lighting started to really shine through. Um, you can see the both lighting IR4s all around uh, the venue. Um, the orange light is actually built in up lighting from the venue itself. Um, but man, I mean, just look at those IR4s, man. They really do pack a punch for the size. Um, I really don't think there's a better uh, value uh, light out there. And then I got the wash effects, which you can see mainly up uh, on the ceiling whenever those shots come in. Um, but those are nice because when you when you point them up at the ceiling, they kind of reflect down on the dance floor um, onto the guests. They're also super easy to use and to set up. Um, I just have them up on top of my speakers, and um, they're both controlled by a fade mode that I use using the Shave DJ remote. So I don't have anything DMX'd uh, just to keep any, everything as easy as possible. One of these days, I am going to get stands. Uh, my plan is to get some wash moving heads, uh, DMX them, learn all that. Uh, but for now, you know, to keep things as easy as possible um, and still looking pretty good uh, as far as what the clients can see, um, I like this combination of, of the up lights and the wash effects. As you can see, I do have my moving heads as well. They're obviously being blocked mostly by the facade. Um, usually I don't use a facade, um, but uh, in case you're wondering why I have one up this time, it's because, uh, you know, I had an assistant this time with me, and I've never had an assistant while using my, my podium style booth. So, you know, with, with him there, I figured the facade would kind of give him a place to sit down, to set his stuff. Um, but you guys let me know like if you guys bring an assistant with you or somebody that's you know Just there for the setup and breakdown and, and helping during the event How do you think it looks if there's two people standing behind the podium style furniture all night? Uh, most of the guys I see on YouTube, you know, they're like solo op and they're the only ones there standing behind their uh, DJ furniture um, So I wasn't really sure about it and decided to just play it safe by having the facade um, and giving him some space back there to, to hang out when he wasn't filming. So yeah, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this gig log. As always, please drop any comments, any feedback in the comment section below. I absolutely love seeing any comments that you guys have and responding to them. Um, that's really the reason I put this stuff out there. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.